You're listening to Truly Unruly with Marcus and Jessica Trufant. Hello, everyone. I, I did that because you did it first. Uh, Truly Unruly, episode four. What's up? My name's Kel, Marcus Trufant, Jessica Trufant. Are How, we going? We're going. Oh, shit. All right, cool. Yay. All right. How was the week, you guys? Was it good? It was good. Week was good. Busy. What about you, Jess? The huge. Kids still in the house. Yeah. Not going anywhere. You know, same stuff. So I've been uh, searching on the internet. A lot of folks have been talking about love language. Yeah. Um, this week, did your significant other speak to your love language? Now, before you answer that, <laughs> some folks don't know what the four love or five love languages are. It's affirmation, physical touch, gifts, quality time. What's the other one? Oh, acts of service. Mm-hmm. Which one, Marcus, would you say is your love language? Um, there's a such thing as being a combo, right? Uh, of acts know. of service. No, no. Um, yeah, acts of service, the physical touch, and affirmation too. I like to hear some. Uh, yeah, yeah. I like to hear some good stuff. A I physical to touch yeah. leading to acts of service. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like to hear the good things. So yeah, a combination. But yeah. What about you, Jess? What would you say yours is? Um, I like the affirmations and, um, I do like acts of service. And I mean, who doesn't love a gift? Yeah, about to say gifts is like. Who doesn't love a gift? Ding, 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 ding. Don't mean a thing if it ain't got that bling. (laughs) Okay, well, (laughs) did, did. She speak to your love language at all this week? Did did he speak to your love language this week? Oh well, um, I know you're busy and, <laughs> and you're doing um, the homeschool mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. So um, I give a lot of grace. Just uh, say no. And where I'm at and what I need, I I understand because I would want her to be as understanding with me, but. Um, can't always have everything you want all the time, brother. So sometimes you just got to bite the bullet. So I would say you teetered on a, you know, um, 60-40 scale. Close, but, uh, but not, not quite. Not really okay. all oh, okay. cylinders. Mm-hmm. And I'm just being yep. honest. So. All right. We'll talk about this later. Yeah. Go ahead. We could talk about it right now, guys. Like. Right. Just act like the cameras aren't rolling and you guys no, can hash no, this well, out. Um, no, I take full responsibility. I am definitely busy. I can't do school, do homeschool, try to take care of myself, take care of the It's It's hard. It's a hard balance. Yeah. It is. It's a balancing act. And sometimes it's a little unbalanced on one side. Right. And that's fine. Kel, so did you just hear that um? Last on the totem pole? And did you just hear that? No. Kind of like I heard it or? or I mean, he might be feeling a little uh, neglected, but, you know, when the acts of service come in, it's like the best week ever. Yes, Marcus, you are at the bottom of the totem pole. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. (laughs) But, but, like, you're supposed to be like, yay. Yeah. 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 But, um, I get it. So, so our, our dynamic works. And will we have, fun and when we're really engaged we're good right it's a it's a busy ass that's a fantasy to think that well i think um as a married man and as a a supporter of my wife and everything that she's done that you have to you got to compromise it's give and take so i get it yes meeting halfway yeah yes now did he speak to your love language this week um, I think we're both even. I think we're but serious. Nice. I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting. I was expecting more, a little bit more uh, demonstrative of a. Uh, <laughs> <Shh>. <laughs> no, I th- we're both even, and that's why it kind of works right now. We're both even. We're both busy. It's busy. So our love language. I mean, there's always. A transaction between us, but it's not necessarily um, transaction. 
So, so sounds like sounds like a what? business deal. I not like. Oh come on, you, joking. You guys suck. Okay, so you no, said it. no, it was not. It it's we're even, right? We're I even. I would agree. I would agree with that. High five. Yeah. 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 Okay. So like when you guys first got together. And even before you guys got together, I mean, even let's think about it, you guys were young, but yeah. were you dating to marry? Like, what, like before you met Marcus, were you when you were in, in, the, in the dating world, were you dating to marry? Hell yeah. Were you dating to marry? Absolutely not. See? No. Yeah. No, no. I, but I think that's a, you know, I think it's a, well, I don't want to throw a, a, a wide blanket, but in most cases, most men are dating just to date and you can't even see that far in the future because of immaturity and yes not really knowing what's up but yeah no nah, i wasn't dating to marry no nah. but so hell no as a matter of fact so, <laughs> and yeah. i said hell yeah i'm like hell but yeah we're dating it's, it's, shit we're getting married it seems like though most women date to marry yes right yes. um why does that seem kind of like a bad thing when guys don't date to marry or if that's not what they want uh it's it's not necessarily a bad thing that they're not dating to marry. Or let down, then. Well, because we want to get married. We women are a little bit, we're a little bit more ahead of guys, right? That's fair. And so when we're dating a guy, we are dating for the potential of a long-term thing. As in, give me the ring. Mm. No, Some, I mean not right, every girl. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, there, you know, women, but it's yeah. not all women. Like you said, it's not a blanket statement. It's right. not everybody. But for me personally, oh yeah, we, yeah, right, yeah, we're so in yeah. it for the long haul. Yeah, definitely. Now, question for you, Marcus: When do men decide it's the best time to propose? <laughs> when do men decide it's the best time to propose? Um, it's really when you are forced, you have to make a conscious decision, right? I know personally, and I know a, a lot of men, um, I'm out there, I'm looking for this and I'm looking for the perfect girl or, um, I'm just out here and I'm just having fun. I'm enjoying life. I don't want the, the, the ties or to be locked down or whatever, whatever. But if you like a girl and you want to make it work and you see a future, you have to make a conscious decision. As a man, I don't know if you're ever ready. Right. And that might get a lot of guys in trouble. But <laughs> I don't know if you're ever ready, but you got to make a conscious decision. This is the woman that I'm putting my energy into. This is the woman that I could see myself with. This is the woman that doesn't get on my nerves as bad as everybody else. So, you know, I'm going to lock this up. I'm going to make it work. And you got to make a conscious decision. Are you ever ready? I don't know. It's a work in progress and you work through that, but um, it's something that you got to tell yourself. It's just like a drug. Okay, right. I'm not going to smoke cigarettes no more. I'm not going to do this no more. I'm not going to do that. You, oh, Jesus. You got to work towards <laughs> that <laughs> to, to, oh to, to, to stop, to cold turkey that oh thing. So God, it's. What? <laughs> yeah, that's just me. I'm just being honest. So. Oh, okay. Well, then I lead in then to my next question. Why don't men propose? Because there is that there there has been relationships that I've seen where people have been together for a really really long time, right. and all of the intangibles are there, all the right. pieces are there, but they just they just right. won't. Pull and we the talked about this earlier before we press play on the cameras that some people have been through trauma in different situations. They've seen their parents in a marriage yes. and it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Is okay. Marriage, I'm going to associate that with this, and it's uncomfortable, it's nasty, it's not happy, so I'm going to be in my relationship, and we're good. I mm -hmm. mean, and things are great, so why would I want to mess that up and go to marriage? So everybody's different. I come from two-parent household, and that's all I know. So, right. you know, I wanted to get married. I wanted the kids. I wanted the white picket fence. I want the wife. I want all that, and that's what I grew up with, but, you know, everybody got a different situation. Right. I think it's it's evolved and the symbolism of marriage isn't as um, it's just not as important as it was. There's a lot. There's so many people 
that are living together and they're not married. And so it's kind of like there's sometimes there's just not a need or it's a mutual agreement that this is working for us. Let's not do it. Or for financial reasons, because you feel like when you're getting married, you got to buy the big ring. Guys feel like that. They got to give their woman this big ring and have this big wedding. And so, yeah. Do you think it's important for people to live together before they get married? Well, because there's a lot of people that walk into that and don't and, <laughs> right. and do the latter. Oh, this ain't what I signed up for, right? <laughs> right. Well, if you would have asked me this, what, 20 years ago when I was deep into Catholicism, <laughs> I would have been like, oh, absolutely not. People should not live together. Yes. I think you, when you live with somebody, you really get to know them and really it like there comes to a point where you're like I'm not really feeling this guy I don't really I don't want to it's not working right right and you know their habits and you know their tendencies and you know how you guys are going to have to adjust and move and work together so I think it could be beneficial yeah but at the same time so describe then the first year you guys lived together what was that like was that an adjustment? What? Why are you looking like that? I was going to let you do it first because it's... Well, it was an adjustment. <laughs> <laughs> what okay. were you going to say? Nothing. I just wanted to react off of Ooh. what you said to make sure that... Like I'm... every week, I feel like I have to say tread lightly. Ooh. You. Why? No, oh, I'm no, kidding. No, 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 um, no, no, no. It was an adjustment because we had a daughter. Right. So I did not move in with him until he put a ring on my finger. And um, so when we, it, it was, it was an adjustment. And um, I learned that we don't use regular plates, stuff like that. It was paper plates, forks, paper, everything. Bachelor life. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Full bachelor life. Can't and that. Yeah. I you know, don't wash the dishes. So. Uh, all right. <laughs> um. yeah, so why would I have a bunch of plates and stuff in the sink? And, you know, convenience. Right. But now that we're trying to um, clean up the earth, et cetera. So we. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Like I put the kids right. to work now. We don't. Yeah. Get, yeah. I, yeah. I've changed. I Oh, sorry. To, you know, you know, for environment reasons. But, you know, when you're young, I mean, and like you said, it was the bachelor life. So paper plates and all that kind of stuff. But um, what do you what do you think? Transition. Definitely um, having to adjust to the way that somebody else moves. Um, I come from um, and you know me, I'm a organized chaos type of dude. So I know where all my stuff is. It may not look clean. It may not be in its proper <laughs> place, mm -hmm. et cetera. But I know where everything is. Like I got it in my mind. I see it and I don't like my stuff moved. Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm saying? And uh, Jess is kind of... Um, it's chaos. It's yeah, not even organized. It's, it's just chaos. chaos. So stuff a little bit everywhere. So right. over time, I've kind of grew into that and it's been kind of thrown back at me that now you you like you it's like I don't even care is what I've been told so you, you if there's dishes and stuff out or if there's stuff out of place uh, I just walk by it but <laughs> a couple of weeks ago I got a little a bit of a tongue lashing and that's okay I'm like hey um um you can you can take yeah, it I'm fine with that right. so you know if your woman wants to speak up and tell you what she don't like about what I'm doing cool Right. A constructive criticism. That's how but, marriages work. Yeah, but to, uh, to adjust to that early on, I think it has to be definitely a compromise. And if a man or a woman is too rigid or stuck in their way, if their partner is the same way, it's going to be tough. But I think we worked out and we made it. And we were young, so we really yeah. kind of, we grew together. Yeah. So when we moved in together, we were still partying right. every week. Like wasn't quite bougie yet. I don't know if we had right. a housekeeper then at that point well, well no it I came know. shortly after i moved in <laughs> <laughs> i didn't have one so what what would, what would be a piece of advice that you guys could give to someone that's watching this 
and they're in the process of possibly getting married. Like, what are some conversations that they should have with their significant other before getting married? Uh, do you really want to get married? That's a that's a pretty that's a pretty good conversation, it's pretty straightforward. right? It's pretty it's pretty to the point. I think it's a conversation that you say, okay, let's give each other some leeway here let's give each other some rope let's let's talk about that it's not going to be easy for this first couple months to a year or whatever and i'm i'm okay with a couple living together before they get married but let's talk about it okay we're coming from two different worlds i know we've been hanging out we've been having a good time but it could get a little bit different okay you you like your towels jesus folded this way and um the, the dishes and the living room and the pillows or whatever, whatever. But let's talk about it and let's be open about it. I think being open about everything is the best policy at right. all times. Right. And, and we didn't necessarily do that, but I think we grew into that. We grew we together. We gave each other a little. That's it. We role. grew together. Yeah. It's like we kind of grew up. To, we matured together. Um and I, the advice I would give people that are thinking about getting married is you are a, I always say this, you are a student of, of marriage and you're a student, you're consistently learning. I'm still learning things about Marcus and I'm still learning and adjusting myself and trying to be better for him. So always be a student of marriage and continue to learn and grow and um, communicate. Without communication, there's nothing, right? right? And just like you said, to be open and to really express your wants, your needs. And yeah, aside from, do you really want to get married? You know. Okay, that's interesting, Jess. So my next question then for you is, what do you say to those women out there that really think that the perfect man exists and they're looking for the perfect man and have these like crazy unrealistic expectations well i would like to say lower your expectations like lo- not not like that but are we perfect as women no so why should you i mean i'm close i'm close to perfect yeah that's that's very true Right. Mm -hmm. But so why would you expect that in a man? I think women, it's we naturally want somebody that's attractive, um, has a a credit score of 750 and above, um, owns a house, uh, works for Microsoft, like that kind of thing. And you can't have it all. You really can't have it all. And even if a guy does have those things, that does not make make him the perfect man. He can literally be a pure asshole and have all those things. Right. So um, you just can't expect that. It's not, like you said, it's not realistic. It's just not. Did you ever have a checklist at any point in your life when it came to dating and men that you were interested in that they, they needed to have certain things? Were you one of those girls that like in high school, like he had to have a car? No. No. So um, a smile and a bus pass was good enough? Absolutely. <laughs> good for you. You're a writer. You absolutely. married a writer, bro. But what he couldn't have. Congratulations, Marcus. Written. You know, written. 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 Written high right. school. You know what? But what he couldn't have, though, is like dirty nails. There, there, there was some serious deal breakers for me. What? Dirty fingernails. He couldn't fingernails. have dirty fingernails. And you know what else? He couldn't be a stalker. Oh, I'm not I'm not feeling it. I was not feeling it. Do not stalk me. Do not tell me that. Don't get no. Nope. But what's your definition of stalking? Because you said the same thing. I want to say in episode one about my man here same being a thing. stalker. No, because he was interested. That's stalking. Well, no, no. There's a difference between. OK, thirsty. Don't be a thirsty ass dude. And there are a lot like hella thirsty ass dudes. And so I wasn't there for the thirst. Like I need a little bit of a chase. Uh. And Marcus became a chase. 
when we lost that connection, right? Mm -hmm. And so I need a challenge. And it, it, dudes is thirsty. So, the, so hmm, interesting. I know. Yeah. Not hmm. all, not all, not all. Yeah. Stroke my beard yeah. here. But that's my personal experience. It was, it was, it was pure thirst. I think like, a lot of women are like that, but I don't know. I am not Gatorade. How true that is. It sounds good, but women, okay, you, you like a chase, but you want to um, feel the, the, a guy that's interested. Women, um, yeah, if you want guys to talk to you and right. you want to do stuff and you may call I it I like the thirsty, chase, I don't like the thirst. You may call it interested, but... Um, like we said earlier, it's a fine line between thirsty and the chase, though. Because if you're not, then a, a woman is like, or could be like, okay, maybe he's not interested or he, he's entertaining someone else or something like that. So what do you do if a guy is genuinely interested in you? Right. What's he supposed to do if he don't want to be called thirsty? Well, like you said, you back, there is or, a or? fine line. And yes, there is a difference. And being interested, okay, great. You call me, we talk, you know, we possibly go on a date. But when you show up at my job in your car and I did not invite you there, that's thirsty. Spontaneous. I thought that was called spontaneous. Uh, nope. <laughs> nope. Um, what was, what was something make it else? Tough on us. That's when what we've only talked a couple times and then you tell me how you've had dreams about me, that's thirsty. Like there's... Ladies, I know you know about some thirsty dudes. Like, they're everywhere. The thirst that is real. That thirsty guy could be... There's thirsty girls, too. The love of your like, life, It goes though. both ways. Well, that you know, man that puts his everything into his woman, it's not wrong with being thirsty. I would, I'm, I would say I'm thirsty now, and I feel like that's... <sighs> so is it thirst when he puts you okay. on a pedestal? <laughs> no. That's, that's, not, not, that's not thirsty when he puts you on a pedestal? That's not thirsty but when you are so aggressive with your approach that's a turn off to me i'm not talking about the grab of the arm and the, i'm not and talking the, about that either i'm not talking about physical aggression but i'm talking about like saying things like i said oh i had a dream about you and blah 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 and oh man you did honesty it. honesty so that's what that's called it's called honesty so a guy can't be too into you is what you're saying yeah because I'm trying to understand, Jessica, like this fine line, like seriously, like where where is the line at? So what can he? So it's he there, but so, so it's hard to find. And, and another thing is yeah. when dudes just when you can tell that a dude literally just wants to get in the bed with you. OK, that is thirst that. to me. No, that's fair. I understand and that. I, that, that is an immediate turn off. But what Done. I'm but what I'm saying is if he calls you once a day, is that thirsty? <laughs> Once or does he? Or, or, it depends on what he says when he calls. Break it up, like it that, that, that's every what I'm saying, like, every other day, hours. It every, depends on what he says when he calls, and it depends on what point you guys are in your while you're courting each other. If you have just met or only been together for like or been talking for a week, and he starts calling you every day, and is like, "Hey, so hey, I really want to see you. I, I really thirsty. I think you got to calm feel the down." Energy. I mean, Back it, it up. It sounds like it's okay to be thirsty if it's um, accepted. If and it's, it's the type of thirst it, I like. And, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. And everybody's different. So if you um, find that happy medium and you can grow in that and you can push forward in that. But if you're overwhelming, you're going to get right. uh, what the kids call. Do they call it ghosted or what do they call it? If you get left uh, on red, ghosted yeah, on red. or yeah. That's an, yeah, getting in your thirsty. Back it up. Back it up. Now, what about you, Marcus? Um, has there ever been, like, a checklist? I know you've always been in the position, especially, like, playing sports, like, in high school and being a star athlete. Like, you've had to protect yourself. Right. Um, so has there been, like, a checklist for you for certain things that, like, you got to have for you to take that step with a girl, to date a girl or hmm. take a girl seriously? Um, not... So much more of a energy feeling kind of thing. If I enjoy your company, if you can, um, if you can hang out with me and my boys, and all we want to do is have a good time and 
I mean, to be on some positive. So it wasn't so much a, a checklist that, I, oh, okay, well, she's not this, she's not that. If um, Everyone is different. Everyone is different. So it, for me, it was more like, okay, you're not going to be my girlfriend, but if you want to hang around, you have to be positive and you got to be, you know, about the party. It's not so much. And like I said, as men and where I was personally, I wasn't so much looking for a wife. Mm -hmm. We were married in my head. So that uh, (laughs) was a part of the, um, not so much disconnect, but that's where things kind of got blurred at times. I wasn't really, maybe I was saying something a little bit different, but that's, in my mind, I really wasn't looking for, you know, a wife. Right. I mean, how could you at, well, at 25, 26 24. Yeah, you're not thinking about that. Yeah. Use a hoe. You know you a hoe. Okay, go ahead. (laughs) See, my man's just being honest, Jessica, and you just go for the throat. Honesty turns into hoeish tendencies and all that kind of stuff, which uh, I'm okay with. Oh, God. I was living free. I was free. I was single. So it's nothing to. Oh, my God. No, you were not single. Single ish. Well, I'm even, I'm even saying even before he met you, like right, just yeah. in his life in right, general. Yeah. So that leads then here to my next question. Does your partner's body count matter? Does it matter? Should it matter? Um, before you're married or after you're married, like finding that out, does it matter at all? For me personally, like 20 years ago, it did matter. Um. When I was talking to this guy and we were going like, how many partners have you had? And I think he was like, "Um," he was like, I think around like 20 or so. And for me, which is like, I'm like, oh, oh no. And it was an immediate cutoff. I'm like, I'm not feeling that. That's, That's too many. And 20 or so, I'm like, okay, yeah, no. No, no, no. But if a per- and he was thirsty too. If, on top but, of that, uh, that word again, right? Um, but but if a person is doing it responsibly and safe, and he's not walking around here passing around diseases and getting people sick and having a gazillion kids, does right. that matter? Like honestly, I'm not even trying to be funny. Like, does that matter? Well, in hindsight, it doesn't really matter because. You know, when you end up with somebody, it's about who who they are as a person, not necessarily how many people they've been with. If they're committed and they love you and, you know, respect you and all that kind of stuff, all that other stuff, you can get past it. But like I said, 20 years ago, wait a minute, but I'm only 25. Okay. But anyways, 20 years ago, I would have been like, nah, nah, play a 20, 20 plus. 20 plus? So, yeah. What about you, Marcus? Does it matter for a female, her body count? I was a good Catholic. I would say yes and no, and let me explain. What? <clears throat> wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Let me explain. Um, I would assume, Kale, that we both know, and even wait, you, wait. Dylan. No, 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 yeah, no, wait, no. Wait, 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 this no, is no. getting real. No, that we all know that girl or those girls that – Back when, way, way back in the day, that I was running through the, the whole <laughs> city. Maxed out. Yeah, ma- <laughs> maxed out. She was active. But hey, you look at her now, she, she's a, a loving wife, got a bunch of kids, and is keeping a man happy. So who, who are we to judge? And the, the, the past doesn't even uh, apply like that. I think the the... Count thing is is a thing, but when you get to the end of it and when you're thinking about life partners, um, if you could get past that and if you can have real conversations and if you're mature about it, for guys in most cases it's an ego thing, okay, I can't get with a girl that's been with a bunch of guys because just because it's not my thing, I don't get down like that. I'm better than that. Hmm. I'm the man. And hmm. That's what I'm talking about. That's gender roles. 
That's that's gender inequality right. right there. But I'm just saying, as far as talking about the body count, it, it's a uh, um, from a man's point of view. View it can be that ego thing, and you could potentially lose out. It sounds funny on a good girl because she got <laughs> a bunch of bodies, but but you never know what could happen. So that's why I, I would tell guys to be open and not so much close the door, even though I wasn't at that. I didn't grow up like that. If a, a certain type of female is a, um, a, a she, she, Promiscuous. Yeah. <laughs> Promiscuous. Promiscuous Then girl. it's like, okay, then you kind of act and you treat her a certain way. But until you get older, it, I think it's all about maturity, man. It definitely comes down to maturity. It's funny that I'm even saying this and like, some guys on my group chats, if they hear this, they're probably going to be on my head. But I would definitely say a it's not. Yeah, yeah. A it's not toe. always about the bodies. It could be a bad look in the beginning and maybe in that moment. But there's still a way to turn it around and still be a good wife or be a good uh, a person for somebody in the future. Right. I had to snap. Wrap that shit up. Get hey, to your man, point. it's deep though. It's yeah. it's tough. Does that, it's touchy. Does that bother you, Jess? Like, I hear you say, you know, it's it's uh, affirming these gender roles. Yes, it it is affirming gender roles that you know girls aren't allowed to be just as hoish as dudes, and we're like frowned upon, and guys are given free reign to poke and stick wherever they please, and it's. It's not fair. In some cases, mm. women want a man that is the man, even if, okay, that guy's popular. He, he may have a lot of women, and he, he may be hoish or have hoish tendencies, but, and we were talking about this the other day, about what um, boys are applauded for and what boys are... Um, lifted up for by being aggressive and doing some different stuff. If you're the man, sometimes in some situations, that's attractive to some women, even right. if you have a, a bunch of women around you. Right. There, it, it, it goes back to the saying of, you know, men want to be associated with other great men. That's why there's a lot of, you know, guys that pass around the same chick or date the same woman. Um, no, I treating I, women I, like sexual objects that you can conquer. Yeah, that's great. Is that what we did? We say that though. Oh, it's like nothing of the sort. I didn't think we said anything like an that. Where, where's another girl? Let me get one of my dog. No, they wouldn't know about that. You are more than welcome to bring another coming? one of your homegirls on. No, no, but yeah, Jess, I wouldn't say no that women or, or that men. Don't do that, but uh, it's always two sides to the story, yes. in my mind. Yes. So uh, I know that men have to own up and take a lot of the responsibility for the BS that we put women through as right. um, we grow up and we become mature, but that's, that's just the way of the world. So, and not saying it's right, but I like to be open-minded and look from both sides. And a lot of men are blindsided or confused that a lot of women can act like men too, and and that affects men's ego. And the ego is the biggest thing, I think, pushing men to do a lot of the stuff that we do. And yeah. we want to be, you know, I want to be the man. I want to be this. I got to be this. So I'm going to act a certain way. Right. Because um, this is getting heated. And yes. Hey, your, it's getting deep. It got quiet yeah, in here. Right. <laughs> your, your, your wife is like big mad. Right. So I'm going to uh, steer this. I need to on my drink. I'm just I am not mad. I'm just messing with you. Um, did you guys ever do marriage counseling? Did that ever come up in conversation? Like before you guys got married? Which I, I personally think marriage counseling is like the best thing in the world for uh, someone that's about to get married. So you can like fully learn. Yes, you know, I agree. About your spouse. I absolutely agree. Um, no, we did not. We literally, well, being we, I'm Catholic. So we had a Catholic wedding and we did have to do, what did we have to do? Yeah, one of those long ass uh, like Catholic a, weddings. A, Oof. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The wedding yeah. and then actual church service. Right. Together. Yeah. And he was three sheets to the wind. So that was Coming a whole other. Yeah. Right. 
Right. But um, we had to. A wedding is a wedding. So, yeah. Not your own wedding, though. I know. I'm sorry. Dang. <laughs> And I was pregnant, so that didn't help. He was hammered and she was pregnant. That's yep. great. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. It got real interesting. Anyways, um, what were we talking about? Lost it. Marriage counseling. Oh, yes. So right before we got married, we had to do, like, fill out a questionnaire. And then um, the deacon, my godfather, of um, the church came over and we talked I think I can't even, I can't even really remember but I do agree with you I recommend marriage counseling because not only are you able to kind of really dive into what could possibly happen um marriage counseling can give you tools you know uh, as to how to deal with certain situations and um, develop more, to be able to adapt more easily and accept things that you might not normally, you know, it just kind of can set you up for long-term success in your marriage. So I agree with that. If we need to go to marriage counseling, we will go. What was the one thing um, about each other that you had to like, get over like was there something that like for instance like maybe I don't know he puts the toilet paper on the roll the wrong way the way I don't like it like what was Mm -hmm. just the one thing that was just like god well as you can probably see just from um, our interactions here that we're a little bit different as far as our energy and how we uh, talk and how we articulate and do different things (laughs) <laughs> so what I would say is just a different a way to how we express ourselves. And just because she may be expressing herself in a, you know, in a animated, excited way, it doesn't mean that she. So you're saying that's annoying. You no, know I'm saying I had to get used to it and I had to give you uh, and I had to give you some. OK, I see some space. What's because that marriage it, counseling number? Because it's not me to be this way. But if things get heated and things are expressed in a certain way, I may have taken it as, okay, those are fighting words. But that's not necessarily what it was. It may just just how she expresses herself. Oh, you know what gosh. I'm saying? So I had to grow into that. I had to learn that. And sometimes fighting fire with fire isn't the best thing. Oh, that doesn't work. Yeah. It, 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 so, that doesn't work. Um, just to kind of learn those little dynamics. And it's not like it was the toilet paper or it's different things like that. There's a because ton of I'm that stuff. Because I'm near perfect. I don't think that really, it matters because it's over the long haul, but it's not that big of a deal. I think when it comes to more of the, the interaction stuff and how you deal with your spouse on a regular basis, it's more important than, okay, if you leave the seat up or if you have too many cups out or something like that, or if you... Um, don't clean up your side of the room or whatever, whatever. So it's little things like that that I think you get over and you start to overlook, but those day-to-day interactions, at least for me, that's what it was. What, what about you, wow. Jess? What a very diplomatic answer. That was really good. President Trufant. I, hey. Um. I just, well, okay, so to be clear, like if you talk to me crazy... In your mind, you weren't necessarily talking to me crazy, but Why I could have took... Why are you even saying that? Because you wanted me to be clear and straight to the... So I'm going outside of my diplomatic, you know, presidential... Tread uh, lightly. So, yeah. So if you talk to me crazy, in my mind, it's like, okay... What constitutes no. talking to you crazy? Out of pocket. Sometimes I could um, be like, you know what, Marcus? I asked you to take out the garbage yesterday... Why are you going to talk to me like that? Um, because you're guilty. That's why you think I'm talking to you crazy. It's just guilt. You feel guilty, so you try and put that back on me and tell me I'm talking crazy. But Jess, nope, I'm not. But, but, but Jess, are you talking at him or to him? Well, at first, I will talk to him. And then if I get no response, I'm going to talk at him but right? but do you, do you think that you're going to get the results you want talking at someone instead of to them absolutely not <laughs> it's just a thing 
Yeah. Absolutely yeah. not. And she has to get it off her chest. It's not yeah. so much about me or about her, but it's just I got to get it off my chest. Me, I'm more, I can internalize things, and I, I mean, I could carry stuff to the grave and let it just eat me up from the inside. I might blow up every now and then, right. which isn't good, but, you know, I'm able to internalize, and that's. He does not blow up. Do you, do you just have a, just he doesn't a blow shit up. ton of receipts? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. If yeah. I got to. If Re- I have to bring them out. Receipts on who? Bam. So Re- Receipts. But I didn't even get to say what. Oh, say what you say. Go ahead. So say it then. Say it then. What I know a lot of women suffer from this with, in their marriage, their relationship. <sighs> chewing. Did he chew with his mouth open? Just chewing. Just hearing him chew makes me want to scratch my eyeballs out and claw, put my, know, dig I'm my not. nails into his chest, right? I can hear him, chew, when he's chewing, I can hear, when he swallows, I can hear it go down his throat, his esophagus, and go through his small intestine. Like, I can hear all of that. <laughs> Like seriously, ah. into the large intestine, like the cold, like everything, I can hear it. So <laughs> it's so annoying, and it got it, it's to the point now where I'll be in the room and it's nice and quiet, and he'll come in with a plate of food, and he starts chewing, and I'll look over, and he'll take his plate and go in the bathroom. <laughs> that's that's how bad it is. But like trauma, <laughs> trauma, right? Yeah. But. I know ladies can feel me. The, the, oh, my God. It's like, how many times do you have to chew before you swallow? Just, just God, Lord, spare me. And that goes back to the, <laughs> uh, you live with your spouse before you want to get married. So stuff like that. Right. Because yeah. that's it a matters. deal breaker. If I would have known that ahead of time that but, you was about to be chewing like this our whole life. But you see, I'm so open. All right, babe. You don't like the way I chew. I'll go, I'll go in the other bathroom. room. My man had to finish his plate in the bathroom. Disrespect. And I didn't even say anything. I just looked over. I don't want to fight. I wasn't going to fight you over chewing. I just make a comment. Just, like, do you have sure? to chew right now? And that's a fight. Can you yeah. just let it slide down or something? I don't know. I don't want to bring up negativity or be negative at all. But when you guys get into it, because I can tell, mm-hmm. like, you're very passionate. Oh, yeah. Passionate. And, right? Emotional. Yeah, and you're very, like, reserved yeah. and chill. Does it get you upset that he doesn't like, like that passion oh, yeah. doesn't come back? Oh, so, yeah. Okay, so do you ever give her the silent treatment? Uh, maybe like a two-word treatment. Oh, it's good. And that's, it's cool. And does that just drive you crazy? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But I know, I know what button Burning push. up inside, though. I know, what, I know what button push to get a response. I do. Really? He might not know that, but I know that. I know. But that bothers you that he's like, like he's calm and collective yeah. during an argument or yeah. disagreement? Yes. I'm like over here ready to just explode. And he's like, it's cool. And I'm like, it's not cool. Or, or he'll be like, calm down. <laughs> That's the, that's the, that's the one. Know, yeah, you can't tell them that one. <laughs> Calm down. No. When you use those words, men, we're about to turn all the way up. All the way up. So don't ever, don't do it. Don't tell me to calm down. So there's things like that's a major trigger. I'm already like at a certain level. And then you tell me <laughs> to calm down. It's over. It's sometimes over. when you separate from reality, because she does need to calm down in some situations, maybe never. it could be better just to walk away or just to let her have her moment and close the door. She could punch some pillows or do whatever she needs to do, but can punch some pillows. she does need to calm down now. So maybe in that moment, she doesn't want to hear that. But what I'm, I'm a firm believer of, you got to, Okay, if you go through your stuff, but you got to come back to even. So after everybody calms down, mm-hmm. then we come back and have a real conversation. And okay? that's where the that's where the this student of marriage or, and the right, work yeah, comes in. Right. Yep. Is is are you the type to you want to discuss it right now? 
are you the type that's like, let's cooler heads prevail. Let's talk about it when we're both calm. I'm, I'm a right now type of person. Right now. Um, I would disagree with that. Really? Yeah. Really? Don't talk to me or, or well, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> And then, it, and then I don't get the teehee between the two of you. <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not feeling it. What is the, with the teehee? I'm done. Um, I don't even want to. But well, that's after you tell me to calm down. I know, but I understand where it's coming from. And when it's heated, sometimes you just got a little, let a little time pass. But I'm a guy that I want to get through it. I don't like to stay in the silent treatment stage. Right. I want to, you know, healthy. I want to get to the root of it and see what's going on. We're only on, in so. the silent treatment stage for like a day. True. Yeah. Right. We never go long periods of time because without of me, because I, the C, does he extend the olive branch usually? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you I for will give me a little credit, yeah. mama. I appreciate it. Yeah. That. You're Thank welcome. You. Is that hard for Just you? To, for is now. that hard for you to do Jess? Extend like, the olive branch? Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. But I have, I have grown. And I've grown because of him. And uh, the type of behavior that he models. And I want to do the same. So even though I'm like, like literally I'm like shaking trying to extend the olive branch. I do it from time to time. I do. And to be fair, I, I, I would like to be more... On Jessica's side as well, I would like to be open about my um, feelings and my emotions. Um, You've gotten better. I'm, you know, I'm more internal, more robotic of push the feelings down type of guy. You so know that's I, bad for your health, I right? I know, yeah. And a lot of men do that. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So, Don't do yeah. it. Really. So I would love to be more of this. So I'm working on that as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it makes, it back to your point, Jess, it makes sense because... Guess what, True? Women want to be led. I'm kidding. I, I'm kidding. It was a joke. It was a joke. Ooh. It was a joke. I didn't say that. I was I joking. Right. I already yeah, yeah, yeah. heard the calm down right. in the back of my head, right? I heard that. I heard, oh, shoot. Hey, let's wrap it up, you guys. This was great. This was great. This is great. <laughs> Truly Unruly, episode four. Uh, Marcus Trufant, Jessica Trufant. Follow us on Instagram, truly unruly underscore podcast. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Podcast One, and you can get the visual on YouTube. Just follow my man's page here, Marcus Trufant, on uh, YouTube. Yep. Anything because you guys want to let the people know? Led. That's it, man. It's been good. Mom, I like being open. I like being honest. This is good for us. It is good. Yeah. Cut hey. the camera, it might be Till Till next time. <laughs> See ya. They're going to fight, and I'm going to run away. So. <laughs>